there are three major museums in York that you would probably enjoy visiting. The Castle Museum, Yorkshire Museum of History, and National Railway Museum. The Castle Museum is one of the greatest attractions of York, easy to walk to on the south edge of the old town. On your way into the museum, you'll see Clifford's Tower out front, a large earth mound with a stone fort on top. The original fort was built by William the Conqueror just two years after his famous victory in 1066. The Castle Museum contains a remarkable assortment of items with a special focus on the late 19th century at the dawn of the modern age when technology went through rapid changes. It's like walking through a time machine, especially in the street reconstructed to look like 1890 with cobbled paving, gas lights, original shop fronts, and actual merchandise from that period. It's designed much like a Smithsonian Institution exhibit where you walk through original environments that create this illusion of actually being there. Time travels as you stroll along. The museum was founded by an enlightened country doctor, John Kirk, who had the foresight to realize that many common items being destroyed and thrown away back at the beginning of the 20th century would someday have great historical value. He began purchasing and acquiring ordinary objects of daily life, sometimes in exchange for his medical services, and put together a large private collection, which he donated to the city of York in 1935, and which forms the foundation of this excellent museum. He also designed the most spectacular exhibit area, the reconstructed street that's named Kirkgate in his honor. There's a large assortment of clothing showing the evolution of fashion throughout the late 19th and 20th centuries. Note how they include accessories and informative posters in the display. You can compare the typical kitchen of 1890 with that of 1950, or examine the evolution of toilets, showers, jewelry, vacuum cleaners, lighting, washing machines, cameras, and thousands of other items offering something for everybody. Quality of presentation is equal to any of the world's great museums. The buildings used to hold a debtor's prison and women's prison, so some original jail cells have been preserved to give you a taste of punishment. The buildings date back to the 18th century, providing a dramatic example of preservation and reuse and how such a structure can be modernized to turn into a state-of-the-art museum, complete with multimedia displays in the jail cell. Well, my bringing back to life some of the old prisoners like Dick Turpin. More highlights include old fabrics and clocks and jewelry. You've got decanters, little toy dolls, and a schoolroom with old wooden benches, and a variety of shop windows. Some of the shops you can walk inside, and in a few of them you can actually purchase things, and a very old car. An extensive collection of World War I weapons and artifacts is also here with reconstructions of sandbag-lined trenches used in deadly battles. Get away from the cramped claustrophobia of the trenches and step out into the old prison yard. And in the back, there's the old mill and a nice lawn give you some fresh air. Then come back for another look at the main feature, the old street, Kirkgate. You could get through the museum in one hour if you're in a bit of a rush, but more likely you could spend two hours enjoying all of the various cases and explanations and some of the video displays to go with it and maybe have a snack or even lunch at their cafe. Some folks are so used to the rain they'd rather sit outside. It pays off to have a big umbrella when you're visiting York in the month of May. We're moving along to the next museum, this time to see some much earlier history. We're heading to the Yorkshire Museum, which is set among ruins in a lovely garden area. Some days the surrounding museum gardens have special events like this owl demonstration that was being put on by an animal protection organization. They showed off the precision flying abilities of barn owls and other varieties. All of it done to raise awareness of protection of birds and the natural environment, including this close flyby over a row of people on the grass. 
This old stone structure is the largest of the ancient Roman ruins still standing in York, called the Multangular Tower. It was part of the original Roman wall. The Yorkshire Museum takes you from prehistoric times up through the 16th century with a large collection of Roman and Viking artifacts especially. The museum was founded in 1830, making it one of the oldest in the country. The museum displays a number of Roman objects which have been discovered in York, including a statue of Mithras, an inscribed stone coffin, and amongst other Roman objects are tiled tombs and a very impressive mosaic floor. The colorful mosaic pavement depicts the head of Medusa surrounded by emblems of the Four Seasons. It was found near Micklegate Bar and was probably a floor in a Roman palace made of thousands of little bits of naturally colored stone. Medieval objects include molded stones from demolished churches, an effigy in chain armor, and a very well-preserved helmet that dates back to about the year 900. It's the most splendid surviving example of its type in Europe. The statues formerly adorned the Abbey Church, and each one is five feet eight inches high. Moses and John the Baptist are represented. The money came from a Viking 10th century silver gilt pot that was full of coins and discovered in the year 2007. A lovely tapestry of a unicorn weaved about 1579, one of the earliest in England. Other tapestries on display show some maps of central England. Very ancient stone tools dating back as far as 800,000 years ago, found in the south of England, among the country's earliest artifacts. Along with archaeology, the other permanent collections here cover biology, geology, and astronomy. It's a lovely museum and small enough that you can see most of it in one hour and admission is free. You should certainly put it on your list of things to do in York. Another one of the top attractions in York is England's largest railway museum, located adjacent to the train station. The museum is a five minute walk from the railway station, either via a staircase from the station platforms or on the road just to the south. The National Railway Museum tells the story of rail transport in Britain and its impact on society. It's one of the world's largest railway museums, perhaps the best, and it covers 20 acres, attracting nearly 1 million annual visitors. Featuring 103 locomotives and nearly 300 other rail cars, the exhibits are showcased in two very large but separate halls, so be sure to find them both. Mallard broke the world speed record for steam locomotives in 1938, a record that has never been beaten. A major focal point is this panorama of locomotives arranged around the turntable in the Great Hall. This is a working replica of the world's first practical steam engine from the year 1830. Stevenson's rocket established the basic architecture for the steam locomotive, which was adopted by nearly all steam trains for the next 150 years. The many, many other items on display include signaling equipment, road vehicles, ship models, posters, drawings and other artwork, tickets, nameplates, staff uniforms, clocks, watches, furniture, and equipment from railway companies, and a wide range of models. There's actually one million objects and two million photographs in the entire archives of the collection. Of course, not everything's on display, but they rotate it and keep it interesting. This is the only Shinkansen outside of Japan. The speedy bullet train would whisk passengers along at a speed of just over 130 miles an hour. When it opened in 1964, it was a radical reimagining of the passenger railway. It was the forerunner of high-speed trains everywhere, which, for example, in Japan are reaching speeds up to 200 miles an hour. If you're hungry or just want to relax with a drink, there is a decent snack bar with plenty of seats available. The display includes Palaces on Wheels, a collection of royal train salons from Queen Victoria's early trains through to those used by Queen Elizabeth II up to the 1970s. It should be no surprise that interest in railroads is advanced here because this region has a long history of pioneering train travel. 
The first station opened in 1839, just 10 years after the British invented the steam locomotive. Rapid expansion of train services required a larger station, which opened in 1877 as the largest train station in Europe. And the original steel and glass structure still functions today. Trains still provide a great way to get to York. We'll be presenting more movies about York, covering the Minster Cathedral. We'll have a walking tour with a local guide, as well as places to eat. Stay tuned to our YouTube channel. We upload a new travel movie every week, so if you want to be informed, please subscribe. You can also find the movies on our website, nicely organized by place. That's tourvideos.com. Take a look at our website where we have more than a thousand free travel movies, tourvideos.com. We're also featuring a lot of movies from Asia. We've got France, Italy, Germany, England, Paris, London, Rome, New York, Phoenix, San Francisco. We've got Brazil, Peru, and these movies are all free and easily available at tourvideos.com.